Chapter 51 De Chiao made tremendous improvements you are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 51 De Chiao made tremendous improvements translator. Atlas Studios editor. Atlas Studios Qian Nan became well known all around the school within a short period of time. There was no one who did not know her. Even when she went to the canteen to have lunch, a male student from secondary 2 stopped in front of her, said sorry, and ran off with a red face. Xiao Nan found it ridiculous. Zhao Yu was fuming with anger. Wherever Xiao Nan went, everyone knew her name. It was as if she was a superstar at school. There was nothing to be smug about. Her results had deteriorated so badly and yet she had the time to be concerned about other matters. Dot as a student, what was important was one's results. Just like the mock exams last time, she would continue to surpass Chiao Nan in the mid-term exams which would be coming in a month's time. The reasons why all the teachers were nice to Chiao Nan was only because she had good results. As long as she continued to do better than Chiao Nan, the teachers would surely favor her and dislike Chiao Nan. Zhao Yu, hurry up, if not no dishes will be left. Zhao Yu's good friend pulled her ahead. Why are you standing here in a daze, what's on your mind? Nothing much. Mid-term exams will be coming in a month's time. I have to do well for the exams. You have always been doing well, ranking in the top 5 in class. If Chiao Nan makes a blunder like before and you work harder, you might be in the top 3. The words of encouragement and concern from her friend did not comfort her at all. In fact, she was offended by them. Humph, Xiao Nan did not do well last time. I don't believe that it was just a blunder. That was lagging behind. If not, how could one make such a big blunder? It's easy to lag behind, but it would not be that easy to catch up. Let's wait and see, I will definitely do better than Xiao Nan. Without waiting for her friend's response, Zhao Yu walked off in anger. Her friend paused momentarily and grunted, what have I done to anger her? She must be sick. I am tired of coaxing her, I won't do it anymore. Xiao Nan who was absorbed in her studies had no idea what was happening. But Zhao Yu was determined to fight it out with her. Even if she did know it, she would not give it much thought. As long as Zhao Yu kept her distance and stopped blabbering, she did not care if she saw her as a target and used all sorts of methods to study. In this lifetime, Xiao Nan finally managed to secure her chance to study and was making progress according to the designated routine. But things were different for Xiao Zijin. After pooling all her money and borrowing from her friends, she had barely managed to gather enough money for her costume. She had settled the issue of the dress costume. But she had no idea what to do with her monthly exams. When she came back home after two weeks, gone was the troubled countenance. Instead she was all smiles, a joyful expression on her face. Mom. Zijin, you are back. Ding Jiayi who just came back from work was tired to the bone. But she beamed in joy when she saw her beloved elder daughter. Are you drained from all the studying these two weeks? It's all right. Xiao Zijin lifted her chin and said proudly, Mom, we had school exams last week. It's called monthly exam. Just like the mid-term exams, it's very important. Is that so, how were your results? This was the first time the elder daughter talked about her results of her own accord. All her tiredness seemed to have vanished, Ding Jiayi was in high spirits now. Mom, I was ranked in the 8th place in class. It's the 8th place. I would be able to do better in my exams next time. The 8th place, such a good result. Ding Jiayi had the intuition that there would be good news today. But she did not know that it would be such a wonderful piece of news. The high school affiliated to Renmin University of China was a good high school. People who enrolled into the school were all very smart and good in their results. Her daughter could come in eighth place in such a good school among all the outstanding students. This was really a tremendous improvement. As expected, she had spent the money well. 
Zijin's results improved by leaps after enrolling in the high school affiliated to Renmin University of China. The teachers at the school must have adopted excellent teaching methods. Ding Jiayi did not realize that the fact that Zijin could spend money to enroll into the high school affiliated to Renmin University of China, the school might have other students, who like Zijin, did not do well in their exams but had the money to enroll themselves into the school. Hence, the eighth place that Xiao Zijin had might not be the eighth place among the good students. Naturally, Xiao Zijin would not provide these details to Ding Jiayi. She only had to say that she was ranked eighth place. Zijin. Ding Jiayi pulled her elder daughter to the kitchen, took five yuan from her pocket and gave it to her daughter. You have worked hard, take this money and buy some good food to treat yourself. Don't shortchange yourself. Later you can get some more money from your dad, understand? All right, mom. You are so good to me. When I am successful, I will definitely be filial and treat you well. Xiao Zijin was elated at the five yuan in her hands. When Xiao Dongliang was back from his work, Xiao Zijin told him the good news that she came in eighth place in her exams. As expected, Xiao Dongliang was all smiles and he gave seven yuan to Xiao Zijin. Both Xiao Dongliang and Ding Jiayi rewarded Xiao Zijin with money. The money added up to twelve yuan. She remembered that Xiao Nan had only taken ten yuan from Xiao Dongliang last time. She could not help but smile that she had two more yuan than Xiao Nan. She had said all along, she was the most important person in the family. Xiao Nan could not match up to her. When her father had forgiven her, he would definitely treat her a million times better than Xiao Nan. After all, it had always been this way. Zijin, have more of the food. During dinner time, Ding Jiayi could finally favor Xiao Zijin openly. She put almost all of the meat and fish dishes in Xiao Zijin's bowl, not leaving a single piece for Xiao Nan. Old Xiao, did you see? Everything that I have done was for the good of Zijin and the family. The high school affiliated to Renmin University of China was such a good school. Their teachers are very capable. It was not a bluff. Of course, most importantly, Zijin is very smart. She had never ranked 8th in the past. Moreover the students at the school are very outstanding and brilliant. It was not easy for Zijin to rank 8th in class. Look, Zijin has grown thinner, she must be tired from the studying and revision. Old Xiao, I won't admit it if you insist that I am biased towards Zijin. As compared to lagging behind in the studies, Zi Jin has made such a big improvement, this is what we call a good and positive learning attitude. Ding Jiayi was full of praise for Xiao Zi Jin. But she did not forget to pour cold water on Xiao Nan. Even if she knew that there was no way that she could have made Xiao Nan quit school and start working, it would be good to pressurize her and make her suffer. Most importantly, she had to make old Xiao understand that Zi Jin was the smart daughter in the family. She was the only one who had good future prospects. Even if she spent all the money at home, as long as Zijin made improvements in her studies, it would be all worthwhile. She was not self-assertive, everything that she did was for the family. Chapter 52 A Biased Agreement You Are Listening at Novel Full.audio Chapter 52 A Biased Agreement Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios, what you said was. Xiao Dongliang found it amusing and angry at the same time. But if spending all the money would ensure that the elder daughter would catch up on her studies, Xiao Dongliang would naturally be happy. No amount of money could buy a child's future. The money spent might be all worthwhile. Zijin is good. Nan Nan is not bad as well. Both of my daughters are good. Zijin, bear this in mind, continue to keep up the good work, don't be overly proud of your results. Xiao Dongliang was not like Ding Jiayi, who praised Xiao Zijin without forgetting to put down Xiao Nan. But when he heard that Xiao Zijin had made such a tremendous improvement, he was grinning from ear to ear. Dad, don't worry. 
I will put in more effort to maintain my results and to strive for better grades. She was overwhelmed to have the recognition of both her father and mother for doing well in her studies. The atmosphere was really good, to the extent that she almost forgot the truth behind her eighth place in the class. She was placed eighth in her class, but ranked poorly in her overall ranking in the high school affiliated to Renmin University of China. Xiao Zijin straightened her back, a look of confidence on her face. As expected, as long as she set her sights on it, there wasn't anything in this world that she would not have. It was all right if Xiao Nan refused to help her. She bought her dance costume and the performance was a success. She also came in eighth in her exams. That's right. There's still room for improvement for Zijin. As for Xiao Nan, it's not that I as her mom wanted to put her down. It does not matter if she did well in junior high school. She had to do well in her middle school exams to be able to enroll in the high school affiliated to Renmin University of China. Anyway, she should be clear about the situation at home. If she wanted to enroll in the high school affiliated to Renmin University of China, she would have to rely on herself. We cannot possibly spend all our savings for her again. I have no objections that she wanted to continue her studies. But we cannot afford to have external debts. When she enrolls in high school, she would have to be responsible for her own studies. Ding Jiayi had no qualms about insulting Chiao Nan. She felt that it was of no use for Chiao Nan to do well in junior high school. It was more important to be able to do well in high school. Everyone in the family knew that she had spent all the savings to enroll the elder daughter to the high school affiliated to Renmin University of China. Ding Jiayi was worried that if Chiao Nan did not do well in a year's time, and she barely missed the cut-off point for enrollment, out of fairness, her husband might resort to borrowing money from outside in order to enroll Chiao Nan into the high school affiliated to Renmin University of China. Other people might not do it, but there was a possibility that Chiao Dongliang would. It did not make sense that they could do so for Chiao Zijin, yet they would have to shortchange Chiao Nan and deprive her of the chance. Ding Jiayi wanted to give a forewarning to Chiao Dongliang and Chiao Nan. Chiao Dongliang hesitated for a moment. He really could not come up with a good solution for this problem. Although Ding Jiayi had started to work, he harbored no hopes that she would earn lots of money. Her pay might be able to cover part of the daily expenses of the two daughters. But he would still have to provide for their school fees. In the past, he had never dreamed that the elder daughter would do well in her exams. Now that she had made improvements, if she could maintain the standard, she would be able to make it into college. The school fees for junior high school and high school were not as expensive. It was easy to provide for his daughters. But if the two of them made it into college, they might not have enough money to support them. Dilviko what if Nan Nan did not do well for middle school exams and barely missed the cut-off point to enroll into the high school affiliated to Renmin University of China. They had depleted all their savings to enroll Zijin into the high school affiliated to Renmin University of China. If Nan Nan wanted to enroll in that high school, should he agree or not? If he disagree, would Nan Nan blame him for being biased? Chiao Dongliang wanted to treat his two daughters equally, but there wasn't much money at home. Though Chiao Dongliang did not pour cold water on Chiao Nan, he agreed with what Ding Jiayi said. As they advanced in their studies, it would get more and more difficult. It was simple feat for Chiao Nan to have good results in junior high school since the syllabus was relatively easy. But it would be amazing if one continued to do well in high school. The elder daughter had good prospects, he had to provide for her school fees. But what about the younger daughter? Chiao Dongliang was stumped for words because of the problems with money. He remained silent for a long while. The atmosphere stilled because of Ding Jiayi's comments. Chiao Nan finished her rice in silence, put down her bowl and said calmly, Don't worry, Dad. I know my limitations and abilities. I wouldn't aim for something unachievable. I wanted to study. I give you my promise, when it's time for middle school exams, I would enroll in whichever school that my results can take me. 
I won't make things difficult for you. Regarding sister's enrollment in the high school, I won't take it to heart and won't say that you are biased towards her. I am content as long as I can continue to study. She had mentioned this long ago, her father was biased as well, it was just that he was not as biased as her mother. Moreover, Xiao Zijin's results seemed pretty good this time. But she remembered that in her previous lifetime Xiao Zijin always did badly in her exams. With that she smirked and shot a meaningful glance at Xiao Zijin. In her previous lifetime, apart from fooling around and being good at networking, Xiao Zijin was not someone who was good at her studies. Only Xiao Zijin knew the actual value behind her results, the eighth place in the class, this time. By the way, sister, it has been a month since school reopened. I still didn't know which class you are at the high school affiliated to Renmin University of China. High School Year 1, 8 The high school affiliated to Renmin University of China has a total of 8 classes, is that right? You are in High School Year 1, 8. Yes, there are 8 classes in total. What does it matter? We are divided into the classes randomly. Xiao Zijin had no idea why Xiao Nan had so many questions but could not help but explain in detail, not knowing that her explanation in fact revealed what she was hiding. Randomly. Xiao Nan arched her eyebrows and smiled. She was not as gullible as her parents. Everyone who knew about the background of the high school affiliated to Renmin University of China would know that there was a special class in the high school. It was to take in people like Xiao Zijin. To put it bluntly, no one in Xiao Zijin's class was studious. It was not surprising that she came in eighth in her class. Nan Nan, aren't you going to do some revision? Time is precious, you better start your revision now. In the past, Xiao Zijin hated it when Xiao Nan did her studying and would find ways to disturb her. But not today. It had been years since Xiao Dongliang and Ding Jiayi had graduated from school. They would think that it was considered good to have come in eighth in class. But Xiao Zijin looked guilty in front of Xiao Nan. She was worried that if Xiao Nan was to probe, the image of the good daughter and good student that she portrayed would shatter to pieces. What about the bowl? Xiao Nan smirked. At least Xiao Zijin knew her own limits and stopped bragging about it. If she continued to boast about it, the cat might just slip out of the bag. After another two and a half years Xiao Zijin would need to sit for college entrance exams. She could not imagine the expression on her parents' faces, when they, who had always thought that their daughter was the top student in the high school affiliated to Renmin University of China, discovered that she had done badly in her exams. I, I will wash the bowl. Nan Nan, hurry along to do your schoolwork. In order to shut her up, Xiao Zijin volunteered to help with the chores that Xiao Nan was supposed to do. You do not need to do the washing, I will wash them. You can go to do your schoolwork as well. Ding Jiayi was still on cloud nine at the elder daughter's improvement. It would be good if she could devote all her time in her studies and target to do well for her next exams and do her proud. Chapter 53 you are Xiao Xiao you are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 53 You are Xiao Xiao Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios, Xiao Nan, you said those words yourself just now, a person must keep their word, if you do not do well and yet wish to attend the high school affiliated to Renmin University of China, please don't bring up Zijin's matter again. Mom, don't worry. I will keep my promise. Old Xiao, you heard Xiao Nan's words. So, don't work so hard and cause your health to suffer because of money. Zijin's grades have improved, in future, she will study in college and our expenses will increase. Health is the source of revolution and wealth. Don't be rushed when it comes to earning money. Ding Jiayi was worried that, in order to support the two daughters' studies and to prevent Xiao Zijin's situation from happening to Xiao Nan, Xiao Dongliang would take up side jobs to save more money. From Ding Jiayi's perspective, Xiao Dongliang's attempts to save were futile. All their savings over the years were gone, 
and she was the one who had asked Uncle Lee to pull the strings to enable Zijin to enter the high school affiliated to Renmin University of China. If old Xiao started to take up side jobs now, regardless of the number of jobs, would he be able to save up the 10 years savings in just one year? Impossible. The elder daughter was Ding Jiai's biological daughter, Ding Jiai doted on her. Xiao Dongliang was Ding Jiai's man, Ding Jiai also loved him and was afraid that he would work too hard and tire himself out. To Ding Jiai, only Xiao Nan, who was always suspicious and guarded, was like an outsider in this family. Nan Nan, have you really thought about it carefully? Xiao Dongliang did not know whether to be happy or guilty about his younger daughter's sensible character. He had always said that he would treat both daughters the same, equally well. The family had spent 5,000 yuan for Zijin to attend the high school affiliated to Renmin University of China, why would the younger daughter be an exception? But if there was a need to bear another 5,000 yuan, Xiao Dongliang knew that he was not capable of affording it. He would not be able to come up with the 5,000 yuan within such a short span of time even if he sacrificed his life. The more Xiao Dongliang thought about it, the more complicated and confused he felt. He could not stand and face his younger daughter with pride. Yes, I have thought about it. You will look at the results of my middle school examination. I have said that the results will determine which school I go to, I will not regret it. In this life, it was good to be able to continue her studies. As for other matters, she dared not expect too much, she further dared not expect her parents to give her the same treatment as Chiao Zijin. It did not matter if her parents were biased towards Xiao Zijin. She would favor and love herself more. Xiao Nan, who had her own plan in mind, clearly knew that there was an issue with Xiao Zijin's ranking in the eighth place. But she did not mention it in front of Xiao Dongliang and Ding Jai. If she raised this up, her mother would certainly assume that she had intentionally woven this lie as she was unhappy and jealous of Xiao Zijin. Her father would also believe this. This type of difficult and thankless matter, she would never do it again in this life. It was still the same saying, Xiao Zijin could create a din as she wished as long as she did not cause trouble before her, she and Xiao Zijin would not interfere with each other. Dad, I'll go and do my homework. To help Xiao Nan strengthen her knowledge and foundation for the past two years, her teachers were very conscientious in retrieving the past year's examination papers, selecting questions, and collating them into test papers for Xiao Nan to complete. So, the test papers and homework on Xiao Nan's hands were twice as much as that of her classmates. Go ahead. Xiao Dongliang, who felt guilty towards Xiao Nan, nodded. After Xiao Nan left, Xiao Dongliang said to Ding Jiai, You also said it just now. I will take care of Nan Nan's matters, you don't need to worry about them. In future, if Zijin performs well and you want to praise her, I will not object. But if you use Nan Nan as a raft to stay afloat again, I will not be happy about it. Both are your daughters, even if Nan Nan is only in junior high school now and the curriculum is not as difficult as Zijin, it doesn't mean that her good grades do not matter. What was said today, I don't wish to hear it a second time. Xiao Dongliang, who felt guilty, simply gave Ding Jiai a scolding to lessen the negative feelings in his heart. He thought that he was helping Xiao Nan to seek justice, but he did not know that the more he said this, the more Ding Jiai hated Xiao Nan and could not see eye to eye with her. Ian Vith I know. All of you are masters, leaving your dishes on the table after dinner. After a long day of work, I still have to do all the housework. Fine. Ding Jiai felt this was unfair. But no matter what, Xiao Nan was finally willing to agree. Mom, I help you to bring them over. Xiao Zijin stood up and wanted to help Ding Jiai serve the rice. Ding Jiai pushed Xiao Zijin away. No, quickly, go and do your homework. Having said that, Ding Jiai gave a purposeful glance towards the entrance of Xiao Nan's bedroom hinting to Xiao Zijin that she should not be overturned by Xiao Nan again. Xiao Nan was so conscientious. Xiao Zijin had to be even more so. 
Mom, then I shall go and do my homework. Xiao Zijin did not really want to do the household chores. The bowls were oily. She did not mind when she was eating with them. But when it came to washing, Xiao Zijin disliked the oily feel in her hands. Go. After both children had returned to their rooms to do homework and Ding Jiayi was also busy with the housework, Xiao Dongliang, who suddenly had nothing to do, felt a little confused. He did not know if what he had done earlier was right. Such a biased approach, did Nan Nan really accept it wholeheartedly without any feelings of unhappiness? Xiao Dongliang stood up and walked to the entrance of Xiao Nan's room. He raised his hands and wanted to knock on Xiao Nan's door but did not do so after a long time. This was because Xiao Dongliang did not know what to say to Xiao Nan. Should he say that he treated her and Xiao Zijin equally well and was not biased? These words, Xiao Dongliang did not have the guts to say. After a long time, Xiao Dongliang gave up and gave a sigh. He returned to his own room. Xiao Nan, who was holding a pen but did not write a single word, heard the sigh and footsteps. She also gave a sigh. Clearly both were biological sisters but they were treated as though one was not. It was not that she did not feel sad or wronged. It was just that she had been too used to the suffering and hurt. Her heart was already numb. If you lean against a hill, it will collapse. If you lean against a person, he will run away. Relying on yourself is the most reliable option in this world. At this thought, Xiao Nan perked up and did her test papers. At the very least, she was not abandoned by all the people in the world. The teachers were very good to her and had high hopes for her. Xiao Nan hoped that she could deliver good grades, to the best of her ability, during the middle school examinations. It might be because of Xiao Zijin's good grades that the Xiao family was very peaceful this weekend. Ding Jiayi was in a good mood so she did not find fine fault with Xiao Nan. Anyway, Xiao Nan had already promised that she would not use more of the family's money. Compared with having to let Xiao Nan work to make money, Ding Jiayi now had only one thought in mind, that is, she hoped that Xiao Nan would use less of the family's money. This was good enough. Monday came. When Xiao Nan carried her school bag to school, not long after she sat down, the long empty seat beside her was suddenly occupied by a handicapped person. Hey, you are the Xiao's family Xiao Xiao, are you the one who saved me that day? The person next to her asked impatiently with a draggy tone. Chapter 54 I will protect you in future you are listening at novelfull.audio Chapter 54 I will protect you in future translator. Atlas Studios Editor. Atlas Studios, Xiao Xiao. Hearing the name, Xiao Nan was shocked for a moment. That's right, our quad has a pair of Xiao, your sister is the Xiao, and you are Xiao Xiao. Zhu Baogua's right hand was in a cast and he looked like he did not have a care in the world. He said in a flippant tone, not bad looking. It's not wrong to call you Xiao Xiao. I have not seen any pretty girls in the Eastern Han Dynasty, but I guess this Xiao Xiao is passable as one. Hearing that Zhu Baogua sounded like a hooligan, Xiao Nan pursed the corners of her mouth while sizing up her deskmate. When she looked at Zhu Baogua, he was opening his eyes uneasily and unable to look her straight in the eye. Most importantly, Zhu Baogua's ears actually turned red. Xiao Nan finally understood. The reason that Zhu Baogua had been saying all this was because he wanted to apologize to her. If you are really grateful to me, don't need to talk so much nonsense. Actually, saying the two words, thank you, is more than enough. You said I was talking nonsense earlier. Zhu Baogua stared at her. He was commending her for her good looks just now. In the past, numerous ladies yearned for his praise and he could not even be bothered to glance at them more. Today, his praise had been shunned. Yes, nonsense. Xiao Nan nodded without giving any face. Now is the time for early revision, I need to read my books. Whether you are reading or not, I don't care and can't control but I hope that you won't disturb my reading. 
Based on her experience in the previous life, Chiao Nan do not wish to get involved with a person like Zhu Baoguo. In those days when she was having a relationship with Chen Jun, Xiao Zijin found out about his family background. Each time she had a date with Chen Jun, Xiao Zijin wanted to tag along. When she did not feel like going, Xiao Zijin even took the initiative to help her arrange the date. Of course, Xiao Zijin would be there as well. In the end, Chen Jun was probably wavered by Xiao Zijin. Xiao Zijin tried to create trouble for her before the date so that she could not turn up, and then she would attend the date on her behalf. Nevertheless, Xiao Zijin was still young now, she had not reached that stage with Zhu Baoguo. But with Xiao Zijin's stubborn character, she was afraid that the same situation as with Chen Jun would happen again. It was Xiao Zijin's own issue that she could not pull Zhu Baoguo on her side. Anyway, Chiao Nan would never agree to act as the bridge for her. Having thought clearly about this, Chiao Nan wanted to stay away from Zhu Baoguo. Furthermore, in her opinion, Zhu Baoguo was always absent from class, she was not close to him anyway. Who would have thought that he would attend class today? It was an uncertainty as to whether he would continue to come to class. For the first time in his life, Zhu Baoguo was shunned badly by a girl, he could only wrinkle his eyebrows and watch as he saw this thin and fair pretty lady ignoring him and taking out a book to read. Zhu Baoguo was very unhappy. He snatched the book from Xiao Nan's hands and blocked Xiao Nan's view with his face. Is the book better looking than me? Looking at the face in front of her which had been magnified many times, Xiao Nan rolled her eyes. If I look at your face, my future will be bleak. But if I read the books, I can work hard for my own future. What nonsense, I am only asking you, is my face better looking than the book? Zhu Baogua frowned. He did not really like Xiao Nan's comments. The book is better looking. Nonsense. Shameless. Zhao Yu, who was seated beside them, saw this and was at the top of her anger. Having known Zhu Baogua for so long, she had never seen him so close to any girls. What was the meaning of this? Did Zhu Baogua like Xiao Nan and wanted to pursue her to be his girlfriend? Have you heard it, she said you are shameless. So, can I trouble you to keep quiet? Xiao Nan looked indifferent as she shifted Zhao Yu's target of hostility to Zhu Baogua. What are you talking about? Zhu Baogua slammed the table and created a big commotion in the classroom. His pair of round eyes opened widely and stared like the eyes of a tiger, scaring everyone. Who are you scolding? Zhao Yu shivered and stuttered. I I I, I didn't scold you. Then who are you scolding? I I, I was scolding her for being shameless. Zhao Yu pointed her fingers at Xiao Nan clumsily. Zhao Yu thought that Zhu Baoguo would be happy to hear that she was scolding Xiao Nan as Xiao Nan had angered him with her earlier words. However, this time, Zhao Yu had guessed wrongly. Zhu Baoguo sneered. What are you, are you fit to scold her, why is she shameless? Zhao Yu, are you still going to say that Xiao Nan was in the bad company of the hooligans, and had indecent relationships with them? Zhou Lei stared at Zhao Yu as if she was crazy. He did not think that Xiao Nan was shameless. You, all of you are helping her and bullying me. Zhou Lei, how many times have this been? Do you like Xiao Nan, that's why you have been helping her to chide me. If you are capable, tell teacher Chen to allow me to change seats with Xiao Nan. Then you can sit together with your loved one Xiao Nan. You. Zhou Lei gave a stare, like a leopard that was furious. Zhao Yu was again frightened. Zhao Yu, do you want a beating? The previous rumors about Xiao Nan, do you think no one knows how they came about? You're just jealous that she scored better than you in the exams and purposely weaved such lies to hurt Xiao Nan. And when we know to differentiate right from wrong, it means to you that we are biased towards and like Xiao Nan. Zhao Yu, do you have a problem with your brain? Do you believe that I will tell teacher Chen? You keep thinking about this every day and did not concentrate on your studies, 
no wonder you can't score better than Xiao Nan. You, you're talking nonsense. Of course Zhao Yu would not admit that the rumor started from her, especially in front of Zhu Baogua. Do you dare to tell Teacher Chen, Zhou Lei? You're still into this game when you're already out of kindergarten, aren't you childish? As long as this is an effective way, I don't care if it is childish. Zhao Yu, if you continue to provoke me, don't blame me for being nasty. The usually bright and cheerful Zhou Lei was in such a huge temper that he scolded Zhao Yu straight without any hesitation. 16, 17 years old was a sensitive age. When he heard that Zhao Yu said he liked Xiao Nan in front of so many people in class, Zhou Lei really wanted to beat Zhao Yu up. But you said something right. This seat should indeed be changed. If I continue to sit at the same table as you, I am unlucky. What do you mean, what is going on, why is there another hooligan? Xiao Qiao, is anyone bullying you? Tell brother, brother will support you. Zhu Baogua changed his stand and called himself Xiao Nan's brother, as if he looked upon Xiao Nan as his sister. I am warning all of you. Xiao Nan is my sister. If anyone dares make trouble for Xiao Nan again, that means you're not happy with me. Be careful on the roads then, make sure that you have someone accompanying you. When Zhu Baogua said this, he deliberately started at Zhao Yu a few times. At one glance, he knew that there is nothing good about this woman. Chapter 55 To be supervised or not, you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 55 To be supervised or not, translator. Atlas Studios editor. Atlas Studios, alright, it's self. Study time now, everyone should remain silent. Even if you do not wish to study, please do not disturb others. When she saw Zhu Baogua, who was standing up with one of his legs on top of the chair, Xiao Nan rolled her eyes at Zhu Baogua. Put your leg down. I'm helping you. Zhu Baogua was not pleased, he felt so unappreciated. Did you really save me that day? The situation that day was so dangerous. That group of people who beat him up were completely furious and out of hand, whoever dared to meddle would have to be beaten up as well. Zhu Baogua could not imagine how such a skinny and petite lady would be so courageous to care about the situation that day. She had even found someone to help out. Particularly, Xiao Nan's attitude today was really cold and unfriendly towards others. She was even more aloof than him. The person I saved that day was covered in blood, I'm not sure if that was you. Xiao Nan did not dispute. If not for someone who told her that Zhu Baoguo was the one being beaten up, she would not have known who it was. Then it's you. Thank you. After confirming that Xiao Nan was the one who saved him, Zhu Baoguo said a word of thanks awkwardly. All right. Sit down, I want to read. Seeing that Xiao Nan was very cold to him, Zhu Baoguo felt that he was asking for it, he wanted to disturb Xiao Nan a little and trigger her temper. I don't know how to do this question, why don't you teach me? Zhu Baogua closed his eyes and picked up a book. He casually pointed to a question for Chiao Nan. Sorry, I am learning too. If you do not understand, you can ask the teacher. I am injured. I'm asking you because I don't want to walk. Zhu Baogua shoved the book in front of Chiao Nan and insisted Chiao Nan guide him. Zhu Baogua did not like to study. He was also unwilling to attend school. However, after this incident, the Zhu family was no longer as lenient and indulging towards Zhu Baogua. Zhu Qingxi told Zhu Baogua straight that if he continued to play truant in school and create trouble, he would rather kill Zhu Baogua himself than to let others do it. Zhu Qingxi gave Zhu Baogua two options. First, to attend school abidingly. As for his school results, Zhu Qingqi did not harbor any high hopes towards his son. Second, he would break Zhu Baogua's pair of legs, if he did not behave properly and get himself into trouble. He might as well let him stay at home and take care of him for the rest of his life. The Li family had also changed their attitude towards Zhu Baogua. 
Of course, they insisted that Zhu Baogua had to return to school to continue with his studies. There would not be any other option. Elder Li even gave his son Dotin Dot Law, Zhu Qingqi, a bad scolding. Zhu Baogua was the only son left by his daughter to Zhu Qingqi. Zhu Baogua had gone astray under the care and teachings of Zhu Qingqi. Would Zhu Qingqi still be able to face his deceased daughter? With pressure from the elders of the two families and Zhu Qingqi's intimidation, Zhu Baogua dared not play truant anymore. He could only come to school and sit around. If Zhu Baogua, who was no longer used to schooling, did not find himself any fun, he could only laze around in his current seat. As such, Xiao Nan became the innocent sacrificial lamb targeted by Zhu Baogua. Xiao Nan ignored him as she could hear that Zhu Baogua was not really keen to learn. She continued to read her own books. She was not even afraid of Xiao Zijin, why would she be afraid of Zhu Baogua? Who would know that Zhu Baoguo was really too bored? Xiao Nan ignored him, so he patted Xiao Nan's shoulder and nudged her. He even purposely made loud noises by opening his pencil box and moving his chair around. The whole classroom was full of the creaking and raucous sounds created by Zhu Baoguo. It was so noisy that everyone could not read their books but no one dared to chide Zhu Baoguo. Only Xiao Nan was not distracted and concentrated on reading her book. The rest could not do so. Xiao Nan pursed her lips and glared coldly at Zhu Baoguo with her shiny eyes. Do you have hemorrhoids on your butt, so you have to keep moving? PSH Many students in the class heard Xiao Nan's words, they quickly covered their mouths with their hands to prevent laughing out loud. Zhu Baoguo's face turned red instantly, like a monkey's butt. Who did you say has hemorrhoids, there's nothing wrong with my butt. Since there is nothing wrong with your butt, then sit properly. If you have so much excess energy that you need to vent out, then go and run a few rounds in the field. You, you. Zhu Baoguo was so angry. Are you a girl, you keep mentioning the word, but, in front of a male. Aren't you ashamed? You see, I already told you she is shameless. Zhao Yu smiled and added to the conversation. Damn your mother, what has this got to do with you? Zhu Baogua simply scolded Zhao Yu. It was up to him what he wanted to say. But who was this woman who dared to talk bad about Xiao Nan? You deserved it. Zhou Lei sneered. Zhu Baogua had a nasty temper. Zhou Lei did not hit girls but it did not mean that Zhu Baogua would not do so. Xiao Nan had the guts to be so stubborn with Zhu Baoguo. If the other girls dared to be so bullish before him, they were asking to be beaten. Zhao Yu was foolish and asking for it. Her enthusiasm was met with cold shoulders. When Zhu Baoguo scolded Zhao Yu, he slammed the table and kicked the chair, displaying a strong and bad aura, as though a hooligan was making his grand entrance to the school. Many were troubled by his behavior. The class originally had a conducive atmosphere for studies. But when Zhu Baogua came, the learning atmosphere was completely destroyed. It would be better if he had not come. Zhu Baogua was not stupid. Also, as his mother was already not around since he was young, Zhu Baogua's feelings were more sensitive than others. Initially, he threw a tantrum as he did not see eye to eye with Zhao Yu. But after he created a scene, the whole class disliked and shunned him. Zhu Baoguo was burning with anger inside, his eyes slightly red as if he was an annoyed bull. He straightened his neck and was preparing to leave the classroom. It did not matter if they disliked him. He did not like these classmates anyway. What was the big deal? Seeing that Zhu Baoguo had the intention to leave, most of them were relieved. Zhu Baoguo had just reached the podium, when Chao Nan, who had been quite silent all this while, suddenly slammed her book hard on the table with a loud slam. It's so early in the morning. Why are you creating a din? Come back. Zhu Baogua, who was leaving with big steps, was stunned by Xiao Nan's slam. He stood at the podium and looked at Xiao Nan. It's the morning revision time now. If anyone dares to make noise, 
get out and stand as a punishment. That slam by Chiao Nan, the rest of the class, not to mention Zhu Baoguo, was shocked. Astonished, everyone bowed their heads to carry on with their own stuff. No one dared to place their attention on Zhu Baoguo again. Why are you standing there, do you want to sit next to the teacher during the lesson? If you are willing to, I can help you apply for permission from teacher Chen. Xiao Nan started at Zhu Baoguo whilst raising her chin and pointed towards the seat beside her to signal to Zhu Baoguo to make a choice. Why? After Zhu Baoguo regained his senses, he argued with Xiao Nan again. Why should I listen to you? He did not even listen to his father all the time. Why would he listen to a young lady who was smaller in build and physically weaker than him? That would be so spineless of him. Why? Xiao Nan laughed. Her laugh gave Zhu Baoguo goose pimples. Fine. Since you like that place, you can sit there in future. Let me help you shift the table. Rest assured, you will know why I said that after teacher Chen arrives. Zhu Baoguo did not know the situation as he did not come to the school to study. However, the rest of the students in the class knew clearly that although Chiao Nan was the vice class monitor and not the class monitor, Chiao Nan's words were often better heard. Who asked her to be the teacher's pet? Most importantly, although Chiao Nan had the power and ability, she was not arrogant. Typically, she did not bother about the matters in class, neither would she abuse her powers to undermine others. She would only do whatever she needed to do. As such, it did not matter if Xiao Nan did not say a word. But once she said something, the students in the class were more willing to listen. Zhu Baoguo was the only rash fellow who dared to argue with Xiao Nan. When Zhu Baoguo saw that Xiao Nan was serious in shifting his table to the side of the podium, he was so scared that he hurriedly ran over to hold his table. I don't need you to arrange my seat. I sit wherever I like. Then are you still going to make noise? Since when did I do that? Then sit properly if you are not making noise. Stop making a fuss. If you are not willing to read then just sit and doze. You should know how to doze right. In short, don't cause disturbance to others. Do you understand? Zhu Baoguo lay on his own table and gave a quiet snort. He indeed sat down and did not make strange noises to disturb others, like he did before. Bedo Dadam Zhu Baoguo was willing to cooperate, the rest of the students in the class had no issues then. The morning self.study time was finally over, but they did not know whether it would be the same tomorrow. When the school bell rang, Zhu Baoguo, who was lying on the table, bored and in a daze, came to his senses and thought of why he should listen to Chiao Nan. Even if Chiao Nan placed his seat elsewhere, he did not wish to study. How would that impact him? Just when Zhu Baoguo just wanted to throw a fit, a few pieces of white paper with questions written on it appeared before him. Complete these questions. Why should I? Do you really want to know? Xiao Nan looked at Zhu Baoguo, half amused. I don't believe that Elder Li did not tell you about it. When you are in the school, I am in charge of you. You didn't want to teach me earlier right? You said it yourself. That was earlier. Do it for me now. Xiao Nan did not want to change her mind. She did not want to meddle in Zhu Baoguo's affairs but Zhu Baoguo was really too stubborn. If she did not arrange something for him, he would always make trouble. At that time, Xiao Nan's studies would also be affected. Preciously when Elder Li requested Xiao Nan to supervise Zhu Baoguo in his studies, Xiao Dongliang simply agreed in the face of Xiao Nan. If Xiao Nan were to completely leave her hands out of this matter, with Zhu Baogua's temper, he would not abidingly stay in the school. If he left the school he would certainly get into trouble again. Xiao Nan would not be able to explain to Xiao Dongliang and Elder Li then. Xiao Nan rubbed her forehead. Her father had really found her a very good job. She had not become a mother, yet, she had to teach and raise a son. How unfortunate. Chapter 56 
Brother Jai is back you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 56 Brother Jai is back translator. Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios regarding Zhu Baogua's situation, the Zhu family had already mentioned it to Teacher Chen. So, when Teacher Chen entered the classroom, he was not surprised to see Zhu Baogua. He even said a few words to the students about this. Zhu Baogua had not fully recovered from his injuries. The students in the class should take care of him more. Besides this, although Zhu Baogua came to school, he would not participate in any lesson that required physical activities. Teacher Chen observed Zhu Baogua for a lesson. He realized that Zhu Baogua was seated in his own chair, writing and keeping quiet, he did not disturb others or Chiao Nan. Teacher Chen then felt much better. It was lunchtime. Chiao Nan stood up straight, looked at Zhu Baogua and asked, Are you settling your own meal or do you need someone to help? No need, someone will bring me my food. You can go by yourself. With Chiao Nan's concern, Zhu Baogua felt at ease. Fine. Having received this response, Chiao Nan did not dawdle and simply left. When she reached the entrance of the classroom, Chiao Nan saw a male stranger walking towards the classroom. Chiao Nan raised her eyebrows. This seemed to be the person who was delivering the food to Zhu Baoguo. After ascertaining that Zhu Baoguo would not die of hunger, Chiao Nan completely put down her worries and went to eat on her own. Boss. After Ho Shan entered the classroom, he said jokingly while taking a glance at the direction where Chiao Nan left. Boss, you actually attended class obediently, is the sun is rising in the west. That girl is so beautiful, is she my sister? In law. Don't talk nonsense. She is my sister. She was the one who saved me. Zhu Baogua smiled grimly for a while. She's called Chiao Nan. Help me check if there is anyone plotting against her. How could I allow anyone to bully my sister? Zhu Baoguo was a very sensitive person. Even if Xiao Yu and Zhou Lei did not say much, Zhu Baoguo also guessed a little. He was still injured and it was not convenient for him to investigate, but he had some followers in the school. He could send his follower to handle such small matters. So she is Chiao Nan. Boss, you don't need to investigate this, I already know. Ho Shan simply told Zhu Baogua all of what happened recently in the school. My sister is so obedient, it's impossible that she would mix with those people. My sister's grades are so good and they said she cheated, who made those rumors, I'll kill them. Zhu Baogua revealed a fierce look. After all, if Chiao Nan was dragged into this, it was because of him. Zhu Baogua understood immediately that rumors were certainly related to the matter of Chiao Nan saving him. After all, before Chiao Nan saved him, he already knew that the quad had to Chiao and Xiao Chiao, but he did not hear anyone talk bad about Xiao Chiao before. If Chiao Nan had contact with those people, the only time would be when she saved him. Boss, don't be anxious, this matter has already been cleared. Before the flag dot raising ceremony, Sister. In. Law. Boss, what do I call her? Ho Shan felt awkward. If he could not call Sister. In. Law, what could he address her as? Do I call her as Sister? That's my sister, what has this got to do with you? Zhu Baoguo, of course, declined. You can call her Chiao Nan. Oh, boss. You really dragged Chiao Nan into this. That day, when Xiao Nan saved you, someone with a loud mouth saw it and weaved tales that Xiao Nan was friends with the hooligans. Moreover, they said that Xiao Nan's grades were always good because the hooligans helped her to steal the test papers. You don't know how miserable Xiao Nan was at that time, many in the school looked down on her. Xiao Nan was the top student in the school. When people in the school knew that she was a fraud, many took the chance to add salt to the wound. Ho Shan recalled that he also secretly laughed at Xiao Nan at that time. No matter how outstanding she was, all the good grades were the credit of others who stole for her. This was worse than a student like him, 
who scored as much as he deserved. Of course, Ho Shan did not dare to say all this to Zhu Baogua, as he was afraid of being bashed by Zhu Baogua. I'll assign you a mission, help to investigate who was the one who started this. Zhu Baogua's eyes were full of hate. The person had the gall of a leopard to dare to do this to his sister. Boss, don't worry. I assure you that I will help you to settle this properly. Ho Shan patted himself on the chest. Previously he was not concerned about this matter, if he wanted to investigate, it would be easy. Where's my food? I'm starving. Here. The brother's follower, a guy who was always by Ho Shan's side, brought Zhu Baogua's food over. Zhu Baogua finished up his meal neatly and in the span of a few minutes. When Xiao Nan was back, Zhu Baogua was already resting his head on the table and napping. Seeing Zhu Baogua, Xiao Nan was more relieved. In the afternoon, after school, Zhu Baogua was taken home by the Zhu family. But when the Zhu family saw Zhu Baogua coming out from the school, they heaved a sigh of relief, and sent Zhu Baogua home as fast as they could. Without Zhu Baogua's disturbance, Xiao Nan felt more relaxed. As usual, she went to the Zhai family's storeroom to change her books. When Xiao Nan just reached, she found the storeroom unlocked. She opened the door and saw a person sitting inside. Zhai, Brother Zhai. She had not seen Brother Zhai for more than a month. Xiao Nan was used to being like a little mouse in the Zhai family, coming and leaving quietly, when she suddenly ran into a person today, she was feeling a little guilty. Yes. Zhai Xing put down the books in his hands. Do you come here often? Zhai Sheng had given his desk to Xiao Nan. So, when he came back this time, he did not have a desk and he came to the storeroom. To Zhai Sheng, it did not matter where he read, as long as the environment was conducive. What surprised Zhai Sheng was that the storeroom was not only tidy but also very clean. He could see that someone had been cleaning this place often. The Zhai family did not come to the storeroom. The only person that would tidy this place up was Xiao Nan. As a soldier, Zhai Xing was used to settling everything in a slow and orderly manner, he could not stand messiness and disorder. Xiao Nan was only a girl in her teenage years and the place belonged to the Zhai family. Xiao Nan made the effort to tidy up the place so nicely, Zhai Xing did not expect this. Zhai Xing nodded his head with satisfaction. From Monday to Friday when I need to attend school, I will come here to change the books. But I'll be here every weekend. Standing before Zhai Sheng, Xiao Nan was as honest as a student with her disciplinary master, her little feet close together, little hands placed properly, body stiff, a pair of eyes that that looked down at her toes and did not dare to look elsewhere. In particular, she did not dare to look Zhai Sheng straight in the eyes. Each time she stood before Zhai Sheng, Xiao Nan felt very stressed. Since she knew about Zhai Sheng's success in future, she certainly saw him in a different light. Chapter 57 Xiao Nan is a crazy fan you are listening at novelfull.audio Chapter 57 Xiao Nan is a crazy fan translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios most of all, even though Zhai Sheng was not yet the chief, that intimidating aura that he exuded made Xiao Nan felt that she was a soldier under his charge. Seeing that Xiao Nan was seated in intense manner, Zhai Sheng tried to relax, was he too serious such that he was scaring Uncle Xiao's younger daughter? I remember that your name is Xiao Nan. Air. Yes. Xiao Nan was stunned for a while, then nodded. Don't be so nervous. Sit down. When he saw the young lady looking extremely pitiful, similar to when he met her in the summer vacation, Zhai Xing's tone softened. Of course, this softened demeanor was solely Zhai Xing's assumption. To Chiao Nan, Zhai Xing's voice sounded more aloof and frightening. How are your grades coming along recently? Not not, not th that good. Xiao Nan stammered and nearly bit her tongue when she spoke. Xiao Nan's face was flustered. She turned away and patted her face gently. She felt calmer thereafter and continued to face Jai Sheng. 
as I did not revise for one summer vacation, I have forgotten some of the knowledge. I, I, I have been trying to catch up recently. Taken your exams? Yes. What have you been tested on, how many marks did you score? Chinese, maths and English. Scored 85 marks for Chinese and mathematics, and full marks for English. Xiao Nan realized that she had said the wrong things. Her and brother Zhai's relationship was not akin to supervisor and subordinate. They were similar to that of parent and child. Zhai Sheng was only older than Xiao Nan by four years, but in terms of aura even Xiao Nan, who had been through two lifetimes, did not feel worthy before Zhai Sheng. These grades, do you have the test papers, let me take a look. The papers were already returned to the teacher, I don't have it. Xiao Nan shook her head several times. She felt nervous to let Zhai Sheng see the papers. Even when Xiao Dongliang asked about her grades, she did not have this feeling. Before Zhai Sheng, she did not know why she felt so uptight and formal that she did not know where to place her limbs. Are you afraid of me? Zhai Xing realized that his several attempts to put down his airs and communicate with Xiao Nan peacefully had failed. Before him, Xiao Nan was like a rabbit who met a tiger. She was so scared that her limbs were wobbly and shivering with no strength to escape. Zhai Xing could not help asking himself, was he really so scary? Not not not. Xiao Nan wanted to say, not scary but when she stammered, not ten times, she changed her mind and said, a little. Just a little. Zhai Xing did not believe. More, a little more. Xiao Nan showed her fingers, indicating that it was more than a little. Zhai Xing pursed his lips. His sharp falcon dot-like eyes revealed a hint of a faint smile. It should be more than a little, otherwise who would dare to play tricks in front of him? If I am home, you can look for me if you have any questions. No thanks. Xiao Nan declined flatly. Zhai Sheng was not an ordinary man, his time was so precious, how could his time be wasted on her? You don't trust me. No, brother Zhai. You misunderstood me. I mean, if I seek your help, I am wasting your time as you have more important things to worry about. When she said this, Xiao Nan was quite coherent. All my teachers have assigned me homework. If I have any questions, it is sufficient for me to ask them. Brother Zhai, you are destined for greater things in life. In the previous lifetime, the Tian dynasty was able to achieve peace and prosperity, with a wealthy nation and strong people, and Brother Zhai played a crucial role in this. Brother Zhai was an army genius and had a gifted brain. He was an extraordinary man. She remembered that once, there were strange activities at the border of the Tian dynasty, the local and the bandits colluded and killed the people of the Tian dynasty. They also framed the people for the crime of smuggling drugs. This matter was very serious and affected a lot of people. The exact situation, process and extent of danger, Xiao Nan heard about it but she also knew that if the matter was not dealt with properly, there would be countless deaths in the Tian dynasty. The national interests would suffer greatly. But she also knew that his matter would eventually be fully resolved, with losses recovered, and it was all due to Brother Zhai. To Xiao Nan, Brother Zhai was a great character and a superhero in Xiao Nan's heart. Since ancient times, the peace and stability of the country depended on a soldier like Zhai Sheng. In her previous life, Xiao Nan did not pursue any idols, she only loved military uniforms and admired the army guys. Zhai Sheng was the leader of the army. He had a few identities that Xiao Nan liked. Hence, Xiao Nan could not help feeling nervous when she saw him. In the lifetime that Xiao Nan was reborn to, the youngsters were already crazy over idols, they would be so excited when they saw them. So, Xiao Nan felt that although she stammered before Zhai Sheng, and she could not make much sense of her words, she was considered well in control. If these words came from others, Brother Zhai might not believe it. However, when Zhai Sheng saw that Xiao Nan's eyes shone with so much admiration and passion when she said these flattering words, he smiled again. 
At this sight of Chiao Nan, he could not help but suspect if he had really done something great to be able to receive such a compliment from Chiao Nan. In particular, Chiao Nan looked at him with such passionate and burning eyes, Jai Sheng was not used to it. It's late now, you should return home. Jai Sheng reminded Chiao Nan as he glanced outside and realized that the sun was setting soon. Oh yes. Chiao Nan slapped her head. Brother Jai, I am going home. Chiao Nan changed one of her books and ran as fast as a rabbit towards the house of the Chiao family. Seeing Chiao Nan, the stiff face of Jai Sheng seemingly became gentle, the corners of his mouth was slightly curved upwards with a sign of smile, like the beautiful and short moment of the winter's first snow. Once Chiao Nan left, the storeroom resumed its quietness. There was occasional sounds of Jai Sheng flipping his books. Dad. When Chiao Nan reached home, Chiao Dongliang and Ding Jiayi were already off work. Ding Jiayi snorted and went to prepare dinner. Chiao Dongliang asked with concern. Why are you home late today? To save someone again. Ding Jiayi said sarcastically. Chiao Nan laughed. No, I went to the place where I kept the books to change them. So, I took the longer route and came back late. Chiao Nan's words was akin to giving Ding Jiayi a tight slap in the face. Dot Chiao Nan was not a policewoman, how could she save someone every day? However, the reason why Chiao Nan came home was because she routed to another path to change her books, and Ding Jiayi was the cause of this. Thus, when Chiao Nan was home late, there was only Ding Jiayi, who had done her duty as a mother so well, to blame. Chapter 58 Elder Li came to visit you are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 58 Elder Li came to visit Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios in the past, Xiao Nan was very submissive, and would do whatever chores that Ding Jiayi asked her to do. Even so, Ding Jiayi still disliked her. Now that Xiao Nan had learned to rebut her words, Ding Jiayi disliked her even more. Xiao Dongliang saw how the younger daughter rebutted her mother. Ding Jiayi was flushed red and at a loss for words. Xiao Dongliang frowned and said, Nan Nan. As the saying goes, parents always have their good reasons, no matter what, old Ding was Nan Nan's mother, Nan Nan should not speak to her in that way. To others, the younger daughter's words might not mean anything. But Xiao Dongliang could tell that she was digging at her mother. Xiao Nan curled her lips and mocked herself. She knew things would turn out like this. But it was okay. Like she said, she would pamper herself. Though her father did not favor her, she would not ask for more as long as he was not as biased as mom and only doted on Xiao Zijin, depriving her of the chance to study. Dad, I will return my school bag to the room. Without much expression on her face, Xiao Nan returned to her room, never once glancing at her parents. Xiao Dongliang felt uneasy at her attitude. Waiting for Xiao Nan to close door, Xiao Dongliang chided at Ding Jiayi, Nan Nan is not someone who is disobedient and insensible. You knew that she is a good child yet you have to pick on her. Look at her attitude now, if you continue with your cold remarks, she may not treat you as her mother in future. Xiao Dongliang could feel that Xiao Nan had turned cold and aloof towards Ding Jiayi. In the past, Xiao Nan would never disobey Ding Jiayi's orders. At times, whenever she was free, she would take the initiative to do the household chores. Back then, Ding Jiayi did not have to work and was still a full-time housewife. Even if Xiao Nan was not very affectionate and did not always call her mom, from the way Xiao Nan looked at Ding Jiayi, Xiao Dongliang could sense the longing affection that Xiao Nan had for her mother. But he could no longer see the longing affection in her eyes now. The younger daughter's expression had turned cold and detached. Xiao Dongliang could not help but be worried. I gave birth to her. Regardless of whether she treated me as her mother or not, I am still her mother. Even when she is an adult, she still has to obey me. Ding Jiayi had nothing to fear. 
she did not wish to listen to Chiao Dongliang's lectures anymore. She went off to prepare dinner. Ding Jiai walked into the kitchen. It did not occur to her that she was also brought up by her mother. But when her mother wanted to sell her off, she also did not obey her and married Chiao Dongliang instead. Nan Nan. Since his wife refused to listen, Chiao Dongliang went to look for his daughter, hoping to talk some sense into her. Dad. Chiao Nan was writing. Dad, I am doing my homework. Is anything the matter? Chiao Dongliang was embarrassed when he saw that Chiao Nan was really doing her homework. Nothing, carry on with your homework. There's nothing more important than your studies. You carry on with your work, I won't disturb you. With that, Chiao Dongliang closed the door and left without saying anything. After he left, Chiao Nan sighed in exasperation. As expected, her father liked to see that his daughters were studying. She knew the reason why her father came looking for her, but she did not want to listen. As children, she shouldn't argue with her parents. But the saying, parents always have their good reasons, was not applicable to her mother. In her previous lifetime she had already paid all the debts and given in to all her demands and requests. In this lifetime, she would not compromise anymore. After that, Xiao Nan tried to avoid Xiao Dongliang at all costs. Xiao Dongliang could not disturb her as she wanted to study. On the second day, everyone in the family went off to work and to school. Xiao Dongliang didn't have the time to have a word with Xiao Nan for a few consecutive days. This day Xiao Dongliang was back from work. He had just entered the quad when he was led away by Elder Li's men. Since Xiao Nan was born, this was the second time that Xiao Dongliang saw Elder Li. He was very happy to see him, Uncle Li, what's the matter? Xiao Dongliang pondered for a few moments and asked, is it related to Baoguo? Xiao Xiao, you should know that my grandson is not good in his studies. So I would like for Nan Nan to tutor him. Is this weekend okay? Elder Li smiled and nodded his head. Xiao Dongliang hesitated for a moment. Uncle Li, it's not that I do not want to help. Nan Nan's results have lagged behind recently. Will she be a hindrance to Baoguo? Uncle Li, actually it might be better if you hire a professional tutor for Baoguo. Xiao Dongliang was worried that Baoguo's results might deteriorate with his daughter's coaching. If that happened, he would not be able to answer to Uncle Li. It never crossed his mind that Xiao Nan's results might be affected if she tutored Zhu Baoguo. Right now his main concern was how he could mend his relationship with Elder Li and to repay his debts of gratitude towards him. No need, I think Nan Nan is a good choice. Elder Li shook his head, rejecting Xiao Dongliang's suggestion. Uncle Li, during school hours, Nan Nan could take Baoguo in hand, this, dot, don't worry. No matter what, I would like to thank Nan Nan for this. Nan Nan is the perfect candidate. Elder Li understood Xiao Dongliang's concerns. He laughed, you might not know, Baoguo is very stubborn. If he dislikes someone, he would refuse to listen to that person. His grandson had in fact sent away several private tutors. At the mention of this, Elder Li had a splitting headache. After going back to school, I find that Baogua is much more obedient. He would stay in school every day. I heard that it's Nan Nan who keeps an eye on him. I think Nan Nan would be able to keep him in check. As for Baogua, he is already in secondary three. I do not harbor any hopes that his results would improve. His grandson has missed a lot of the classes. Not to mention Xiao Nan, his teachers might not even be able to help him to improve his results. So you would like Nan Nan to keep an eye on him? Yes, Bao Gua has not fully recovered from his injuries. But he is so full of energy that he can't keep still. Nobody can control him. Xiao Dongliang was shocked. He had heard of Zhu Bao Gua's temper, to put it bluntly, he was a bully. When they were still young, all the children in the quad were fearful of Zhu Baoguo. They tried to keep themselves out of his way. 
Nan Nan might be of the same age as Zhu Baogua, but they never played together when they were small. Would Zhu Baogua obey her? If that's the case, it might work. Nan Nan is a quiet girl. Xiao Dongliang thought about it and agreed. Xiao Xiao, have you heard of this saying, to govern the country, and bring peace to all, one should first be able to govern one's family. Recently I have heard quite a lot of rumors about your family. Xiao Xiao, what are your views? After settling Zhu Baogua's matters, Uncle Li touched upon his main topic. My. My family is doing well. Xiao Dongliang blushed. Why would Uncle Li ask this question? Did Nan Nan spout nonsense to Baogua? One should not wash dirty linen in public. Nan Nan had gone way overboard this time. Good. It's good that your wife sold Nan Nan's books and wanted her to quit school. Chapter 59 Harsh Criticisms You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 59 Harsh Criticisms Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios, Xiao Xiao, your pay is pretty high. Why would Nan Nan need to work? Nan Nan's results are good, yet you wanted her to discontinue the nine years of compulsory education and to start work, is everything all right at home? Did your wife spend all the savings at home when she came to ask me for help to enroll the elder daughter into the high school affiliated to Renmin University of China? Xiao Xiao, I always taught you to be pragmatic. As the saying goes, there are 365 trades, and every trade has its master. If she is not good at studying, she can consider other options. Is it appropriate to spend all the hard-earned money on the elder daughter and to sacrifice the future of another daughter? It's useless to reach for what is beyond one's grasp, instead one should be earnest and down dot to dot earth. One should act according to one's ability. Teenagers nowadays are flippant and not down dot to dot earth. Xiao Xiao, why would you have this shortcoming as well? Don't forget, you were a soldier. After listening to Uncle Li's wise and earnest words, Xiao Dongliang was lost for words. He could understand every single word that Elder Li said. But when they formed into sentences, they seemed foreign to him. Uncle Li, it was through your help that Zijin was able to enroll into the high school affiliated to Renmin University of China. Xiao Dongliang paused for a moment before he asked. Xiao Ding came looking for me. She would like me to make a phone call. She was the one who made the other arrangements. Xiao Xiao, you should know my temper, I would never do these things. Even if it was for my son or my daughter. You grew up with them, have I helped them out in similar ways? Xiao Xiao, do you know how disappointed I was in you at that time? Uncle Li sighed. When Ding Jiayi came looking for Elder Li to help out with Xiao Zijin's matters, Elder Li was not very willing to help. He had always disliked these dealings. Even for his biological son and daughter, he wanted them to carve out a path by themselves. Yet he had to resort to getting in through the back door for someone else's daughter. Elder Li really wanted to turn Ding Jiayi down. Elder Li, I had no idea. Xiao Dongliang rubbed his face. Old Ding did such a thing behind his back and resorted to these methods to enroll Zijin into the high school affiliated to Renmin University of China. I knew you were unaware. If you were aware, you would have stopped Xiao Ding from seeking my help. Uncle Li nodded. After all he watched Xiao Dongliang grew up, he knew him well. When Xiao Dongliang heard this, he felt slightly relieved. But Xiao Xiao, Xiao Ding is your wife. You had no idea what she is doing or what she is up to. Even when your elder daughter really enrolled into the high school affiliated to Renmin University of China, you did not say anything. This is what disappointed me the most. Xiao Xiao, you are a soldier. Now that you are no longer in the army, is your heart discharged as well? Do you know what was on my mind then? I thought that fortunately you were discharged from the army. Otherwise, if you continue to stay in the army with your mindset, it's a small matter if you create troubles for yourself, but what if you dragged your comrades down as well? 
Xiao Xiao, you are the only person who can disappoint me. Of course, Uncle Li agreed to help as he had guessed that it was Ding Jiayi who made the decision to look for him. Elder Li was the one who introduced Ding Jiayi to Xiao Dongliang. If not for Elder Li, Xiao Dongliang would not have married Ding Jiayi. He had to help since it was Ding Jiayi. No matter how unhappy he was, he had to make the phone call. But he had told Ding Jiayi there and then, that it was the first and only time that he would do her this favor. Xiao Dongliang was furious and upset when he knew that Elder Li was disappointed with him. He had thought that it was his wife who had created the trouble and it was his younger daughter who told Elder Li of the situation at home, and that he ended up being so embarrassed all because of them. But after hearing Elder Li's words, he realized that he was the real problem. Elder Li was disappointed by his behavior, it had nothing to do with his family. Xiao Xiao, tell me honestly, regarding what I said just now, did you think that it was Nan Nan who told Bao Gua and Bao Gua related to me? At Elder Li's questioning, Xiao Dongliang's expression turned grave and was red with embarrassment. He was speechless. Look at you, you do not have the attributes of a soldier. You did not look into it or probe and yet you jump to conclusions and declare Nan Nan guilty. When you were in the army, what did the officer teach you? They say Xiao Ding is biased. To me, you are biased as well. I did hear some stories from Bao Guo. But for the rest, it had already spread around in the quad. Xiao Xiao, should you do some reflections? Since some time ago, the people from the quad came to know that Ding Jiayi sold Nan Nan's books and because of that she almost could not continue with her studies. Everyone also knew about the fact that Ding Jiayi wanted the younger daughter to quit school and to start working. Lots of the people from the quad saw Xiao Nan coming back with a stacks of old books from the thrift shop. After seeing it with their eyes, the people from the quad all believed what they heard regarding Xiao family. In other words, everyone knew what had happened at the Xiao family these past two or three months. It was a textbook example of what not to do. Spread. Xiao Dongliang was dumbfounded. It was no wonder that the people from the quad gave him weird stares whenever he went work. Xiao Xiao, I am really disappointed in you. Uncle Li could not hide his exasperation towards Xiao Dongliang. Where is your heart? Why are you muddled? Headed like a block of wood. All right, it's late. You should go back. Bao Guo told me that Nan Nan is very quiet at school, her character is just like what you said. This weekend, send Nan Nan to my house. You do not have to worry about her meals. With that, Elder Li waved his hands, motioning for Xiao Dongliang to leave. He was annoyed and vexed. He did not want to see Xiao Dongliang anymore. Actually when he visited Xiao's house to thank Xiao Nan, he had noticed the weird atmosphere then. When Zhu Baogua told him of the bad rumors circulating around the school regarding Xiao Nan, he had sent people to investigate. He was shocked at the results. Lots of things had happened at Xiao family recently, and all were scandals. Before school reopened, Xiao Nan was beaten by Ding Jiayi and dashed out of the house with blood dripping from her nose. After she was sent to the hospital by Xiao Dongliang, the doctor diagnosed that she was malnourished. Elder Li was speechless when he heard about this. The country was prosperous and the economy was doing well. There wasn't even famine here, why would Xiao Dongliang's daughter be malnourished? This was really. Elder Li clearly remembered that when he saw the two sisters that day, Xiao Zijin was polite, well-dressed and good with words. She was someone who was good at networking. One look at her and one could tell that she was doted by her parents. On the other hand, Xiao Nan had been standing behind her, not uttering a single word. If he did not mention, Xiao Nan would be like a shadow, going unnoticed by everyone. It pained Elder Li to see this. Two daughters, yet one had a plump face and looked radiant, while the other one looked pale and yellowish, silent and reticent. Chapter 60 Learn if you want to you are listening at novelfull.audio Chapter 60 Learn if you want to translator 
Atlas Studios editor. Atlas Studios they were both their biological daughters, and Xiao Dongliang was the one who wanted to have Nan Nan. Elder Li could not understand why Xiao Dongliang would let such things happen at his house. Elder Li looked weary and tired. Xiao Dongliang did not say a word, stood up and turned to leave. Xiao Dongliang had known Elder Li for years. Even if it was when he left the army to have a second child, Elder Li might be disappointed in him, but he had never said such harsh words to him. Nan Nan, you are back. When Xiao Dongliang reached home, Xiao Nan was already at home. Xiao Nan paused and called, Father. Xiao Dongliang sighed at the younger daughter's cold attitude. It seemed like Nan Nan blamed both Xiao Dongliang and Ding Jiayi for what happened. Are you going to read your books? Yes. Xiao Nan had no idea what Xiao Dongliang wanted to talk to her about. As usual, she refused to communicate with him. No matter what, she would not compromise regarding matters concerning her mother. Then go ahead to study. Oh. The conversation between the father and daughter ended with simple replies. During dinner time, Xiao Dongliang said, Nan Nan, make a trip to Li's house tomorrow. Li's house. Xiao Nan blinked in confusion. Elder Li's house. You shouldn't call him, Elder Li, call him, Grandpa. Dot. Xiao Dongliang reprimanded Xiao Nan. Tomorrow Zhu Baoguo will go to Li's house. You will help him with his revision. Remember, put in some efforts and teach him well. Do you understand? Xiao Nan pursed her lips and replied coldly. Ding Jiayi was not too happy at this news. But when she saw Xiao Nan's response, she thought about it and curled her lips into a smile. This time, she did not give her objections. Xiao Dongliang had already promised Elder Li. Xiao Nan had no other choice. On the weekend, she took her books and went to Li's house. Zhu Baogua arrived earlier than her. Oh, you have arrived. Zhu Baogua propped his two legs on the table, leaned back on the chair, twitched his lips and held his pen with his upper lips and nose. He did not look like he was here to study. In fact, he looked like he was on vacation. Seeing this, Xiao Nan frowned and said coldly, you have two choices, one, you can't go out, you will do whatever you want while I read my books, second, put down your legs, you will do what I say. Zhu Baogua's legs crumbled under him, he almost fell off from his chair. He never thought that Xiao Nan would be so firm. This was Li's house, but it seemed more like Xiao's house. Since Xiao Nan was here, shouldn't she talk to him nicely and patiently and only start teaching when he had accepted her? Why did Xiao Nan sound as if she did not care if he wanted to learn or not? If he did not want to study, she was not going to coax him into learning. She would allow him to do whatever he wanted. Grandpa asked Xiao Nan to coach him. Could Xiao Nan say all this? Are you serious? Zhu Baoguo was dumbfounded. What do you think? Xiao Nan sat at one side and took out her revision notes. Without another look at Zhu Baogua's legs that was propped on the table, she started to read her books. But my grandpa asked you to teach me. Was Xiao Nan's attitude that of a tutor? The teachers were there to teach students. But if you refuse to learn, can they do anything about it? I couldn't possibly be better than a teacher. To Xiao Nan who once lost the chance to study, she was very displeased with Zhu Baogua's learning attitude. He did not understand how fortunate he was. It was up to Zhu Baoguo whether he wanted to study or not. If he was willing to learn, she would put in efforts to teach. If Zhu Baoguo was unwilling to study, she would just treat it as another place for her to study. Li's house was big and spacious and there was no point one to disturb her. If not for the good study environment, she would not have wasted her time on someone who did not want to study. You aren't going to persuade me to study at all. Aren't you worried that given your bad attitude, I, I might walk off in anger? Zhu Baogua stood up, preparing to leave. Zhu Baogua turned and looked at Xiao Nan while he was on his way out. 
He was waiting for Xiao Nan to come after him. But he had already reached the door, and he realized that Xiao Nan was still at the table. In fact she seemed to have finished a few problem sums. Zhu Baogua felt really foolish. Xiao Nan did not pay attention to him at all. She made use of the time to study. He only took a few steps towards the door, but she had already finished a few questions. Hey! Zhu Baoguo walked angrily to Xiao Nan's side. When Xiao Nan paid no attention to him, he snatched her books in anger. Xiao Nan squinted at Zhu Baoguo, I have lots of workbooks. It's alright if you snatched one of my workbooks. I can change to another workbook. But don't you find yourself to be very childish? What do you mean by this attitude of yours? Do you not want to teach me? Are you looking down on me because I did not have a mother since a young age? This time, Zhu Baoguo was really furious. He really treated Xiao Nan as his sister. But she had always been cold towards him. Did she think that he was beyond hope and it would be a waste of time to teach him? Look down. I do not have the right to do that. Xiao Nan shook her head. It's just that I knew it better than anyone else. If you are willing to learn, you would be able to take in what I said. But if you do not want to learn, you would turn a deaf ear to what I said and my studies would be affected as well. It's not worth it. Do you want to learn or not? Xiao Nan did not use any flowery language, and her words might not carry a deep meaning, but what she said was the plain, simple truth. Xiao Nan was so calm and indifferent. Zhu Baogua's outburst of temper did not affect her at all. You would teach me if I wanted to learn. Zhu Baogua asked in some annoyance. Yes, if you want to learn, I will teach you, if you don't want to learn, I won't bother you. How do you intend to teach me? I don't even know what my standard is. Finish this first. I will decide on how to teach you after that. Xiao Nan handed a sheet of paper to Zhu Baoguo. It was a test paper to determine his standards. Zhu Baoguo was appeased when he saw the handwritten test paper. So you came prepared. Xiao Nan actually cared about him. Xiao Nan remained silent about Zhu Baoguo's demanding character. She was fine as long as he kept quiet. Zhu Baoguo took the handwritten test paper and started working on it while Xiao Nan was busy doing her problems. The room was in total silence, it was a good learning environment. Elder Zhu could not help but worry about his grandson. He decided to take a look. He was not worried that his grandson might bully the young lady. He was anxious that he might not be willing to study, and that he might head off to have fun after throwing a tantrum at the young lady. It would be disastrous if he injured himself again. What he saw came as a surprise to him. When he walked into Li's house, his grandson sat quietly at a side, with a pen in hand, writing diligently. 